you can really utilize that primary currency if you do it well. And this has a lot to do with the sinks that Nick is talking about. But if you do that, you basically can, like, it's, it's a very powerful, powerful currency. Um, I've actually talked to one of our application developers, and he was like, wow, you know, people are actually converting premium currency into normal currency. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty stingy. <laughs> anyways, so there's a, there's a lot you can do with both currencies instead of just one. Um, so just keep that in mind. Don't throw away your primary currency by any means because you can totally take advantage of it later on. Um, stale currency is also worthless. So as Nick says, you always want to make sure that you have a nice funnel. Create a lot of sinks and create a lot of ways for them to gain um, more currency because that will create value. And as that perceived value increases, the chances of you catching that user permanently and monetizing off of them increases as well. So that's a very important fact. Um, most of that Nick covered, so I'll skip that. Okay, last one. Um, the, let the users decide how far they're willing to go. This is an interesting one. Excuse me one second. Uh, the, the Challenge Games actually has a really cool game out right now. Um, I've been playing it. I don't know if any of you have seen it. It's Warstorm. It's mimicking essentially like a card action game. And it's got one of the coolest monetization strategies ever, which is essentially mimicking real life. <laughs> the card games are super addictive, and you have the ability to buy things as simple as like booster packs, which has three cards in it. Or you can go even further and get complete decks. They have unique cards in there. They have, they have all sorts of things in there, and it's just the complete, it's how far does the user himself want to go, and how far they're willing to open their wallet, or how far they're willing to do an offer, or a survey, or whatever. Give them that option, right? Don't give them one or two options. Make multiple tiers, and that'll give people the ability to go as far as they're willing to invest, which means that you get the maximum amount of currency out of your application, which is ideal. Okay, so that's pretty much my wrap-up of that. Chapter 3, which is future monetization opportunities. Um, I have a great quote here from Spaceballs, uh, Mel Brooks, which when he was talking about you know, the t-shirt, the, the coloring book, and the lunchbox, and the flamethrower, which is one of my favorite parts of the movie. Um, but anyways, moving on, it's basically just advertising, right? So what are the tools that we have that basically we can utilize now because of the, the social platforms that we haven't had before. So the demographics, know your users, right? So knowing the vital characteristics of your users is one of the best ways just to increase monetization. Again, Nick mentioned some of this too, but geo, age, gender, time of week, time of day, does your application fluctuate like this? Is there a certain like block of social this that you need in order for people to really interact on your application? Do you have real-time events occurring? Um, there's a lot of different ways you can do this, especially if you're if you have a very large international presence on your application. Make sure you utilize that. Um, Facebook fan pages. Just if you guys are on Facebook uh, for your social platform, uh, they're a great way to determine your strengths and the reach of your users. Uh, the, the fan pages are pretty cool, so it's a great way to reach out to your users and to tell them a lot of things. Um, and so lastly on this, this slide, focus your monetization tools to best monetize your users, right? As I was mentioning before. So certain monetization strategies will work better with some demographics than others. So just make sure that you're, you keep that in mind. There isn't one right answer to monetize your users. It's going to be a variety of them. So make sure that you try out a lot of different things because you never know what's going to work. Some will work here, some will work there. Who knows? Okay. Last, uh, one of the last slides I have here is actually the future of monetization, or a future of monetization, because I'm not going to dictate that there's only one, but talking about advertising. So just here's some general characteristics, again, of where I think this is going, because I think it's pretty cool. With the increase of casual cameras on the social networks, the population, as I mentioned before, right, they're now becoming accessible. And I'm reiterating that because it's not a small point. So second point on here, right? Clean sources of revenue are becoming increasingly important on the social networks.
which is very, very important to any company that's trying to promote their brand. Three. And while users and small companies are the easiest to monetize against, large companies implementing advertising deals, they contain <laughs> deep park pockets and targeted interests. Right? Um, I'm going to mention here at the time too that with all the stuff that's going on, especially on Facebook and with FB credits, advertising is one of those things that you actually control on your application. That's why a lot of people, I don't, I, it's not just me, I've heard this a few, uh, quite a few times that advertising is a way that people are looking to in the future for making a lot of money. And the last one, last one I'm going to, it's, yeah, I, I just said that it's basically what the large companies want, right? All of these little aspects that I have mentioned over and over again, the strengths of the social platforms, the characteristics, where the industry is going, it's getting very, it's like a really ripe fruit. It's getting ready to get plucked. So all of you, make sure you're on board with that because it's going to be good. Okay, final word. Um, this is my conclusion, and again, one of my favorite movies, Ghostbusters, that's a big Twinkie. Right? Yeah, so I just want to thank everyone here. Um, I, I want to reiterate again that the developers, everyone in this room, they're supremely important. And as much as you feel like an individual developer doesn't impact what's going on, that much is completely untrue, right? The platform needs you guys just as much as you need the platform. And companies like us and OfferPal, we need you guys just as much as we need the platform, right? It all wraps together. But don't ever feel like that you are, you know, insignificant in the realm of the social world. In the social world, in fact, the platforms themselves, when the developers speak in unison because they're really pissed off at something about something, the platforms will respond. So again, keeping you guys happy, making you guys a lot of money, it's paramount to the entire industry as a whole. So don't ever feel that you're small and insignificant in this because none of you are. Every single one of you is important. Um, and my last slide on here is basically just a thank you to the Social Games Seattle crew. You guys are awesome. As well as the you know social developers everywhere for the reasons I just stated. And Rocky for sending me out here and talking to you guys because you guys are awesome. So thank you very much. Uh, I'll be out there and if you ever want to talk to me in the booth. So.